to the uh, lecture number 11 in module 4, module 4 on the confidence interval. And lecture 11 is working with small samples and rationale behind the t-distribution. Uh, please allow me to present a new term. It is called effect size. Effect size is the amount above or below the mean that we use to trap a specific percentage of data. Now, you can trap on each side of mu. You can also trap on each side of p. So effect size is a new term, and both mu and p are measures of central tendency. Now, look at this effect size. Here the effect size is z sigma. You recognize that as the effect size for a simple data distribution. We also have e equals z times sigma divided by the square root of n. This is an effect size when we're looking at an x-bar distribution. We have e equals z times the square root of p times q divided by n, and this is the effect size for a proportion uh, distribution. Now, the foundation of inferential statistics is that we take a sample and we use that sample to infer about the population. In this picture, we have a sample of x's inferring about a population, and we're using x bar to speculate about mu. Uh, when we use a sample to speculate about the population, the real issue is the standard deviation of the sample, and it's being an estimate for sigma. For large samples, we think that S fairly well converges on sigma, and we use a z-score. If the number in the sample is less than 30, we have to compensate for error in S in predicting sigma, and for this reason, we'll use a t-score to widen out our interval. Now, look at the effect size here in this diagram. The effect size could be z times some standard deviation, which gives us the the distance below the mean and the distance above the mean required to trap a certain percentage of data. When we use a t-score, the t-score widens the interval. Look at here. Here's the z-score interval. Here's the t-score interval. The t-score widens the interval to compensate for s not being a good predictor of sigma. Now that we've gone through that, I want to show you how to read a t-score table. So hang on for the following exciting discussion of this tremendous topic. Now, the smaller the sample size, the more compensation that must be made for S as a predictor of sigma. For instance, if 30 is the magic cutoff, a 25 sample size would have a fairly good chance of S being close to sigma, where a sample size of 5 would lead to a lot of potential error. Uh, the T distribution evaluates the small size of the sample in by using what we call degrees of freedoms to compensate. The degrees of freedom are represented by the little letters df, and the formula for calculating df is equal to n minus 1. For instance, if you have a sample of size 25, then your degrees of freedom are equal to 25 minus 1. Your degree of freedom is equal to 24. If you have a sample size of 5, your degree of freedom is equal to 4. If you have a sample size of 12, your degree of freedom is equal to 11. Now, just as in the preceding problems, we need to know a confidence level. But in small sample, we're not just interested in the confidence level. We must also know the respective degree of freedom. So if they say it's 80% with a sample size of 10, then you have an 80% confidence level and you have nine degrees of freedom. And you'll need the confidence level and the degree of freedom in order to find the proper value in the t-table. Now observe, we have here a segment out of the t-table. And uh, I'd like to tell you that this is right out of the back of your book, but I actually did this in Excel so it would look a little better. The one in the back of the book runs all the way down to big numbers. Now, if us, we're going to learn to read this, you'll notice that there are three rows across the top. Over on the left, there's a list of numbers. And then there are a bunch of values down in the middle. The rows across the top have to do, one tail and two tail, have to do with hypothesis testing, which we'll do in the next section. The next row has to do, at least, of course, degrees of freedom, but that C stands for confidence level. Now, let's see if we can learn to read this monstrosity. Uh, notice, first of all, the degrees of freedom. 
in that third line, the degrees of freedom. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, so forth. And I only listed down to 15. Now, if you go all the way down to that bottom number, infinite degrees of freedom, well, what you in fact do is you wind up with a Z score at that point. T scores are always larger than their respective Z scores. Degrees of freedom are calculated by taking the sample size N and subtracting one from it. DF equals N minus one. The next thing that you will need to use in confidence intervals is the level of confidence. In the T table, that is represented by a single letter C, and you will read across on that third line where I have underlined in red, you have 50%, 75%, 80, 85, 90, 95, 98, 99, and 99.9% .9 confidence. So you'll be using the degree of freedom side, and you will be using a confidence level. In order to do small samples, you must uh, know the confidence level and you must be able to find the degrees of freedom they have to give you n which is the size of the sample so you can calculate degrees of freedom in order to find a score now let's see if we can work a problem we're going to start out for a confidence level of 80 percent with a sample size of 14 the first thing we're going to do is calculate our degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom is equal to 14 minus 1, which is 13. So we have 13 degrees of freedom. Now we want to look across on that third line at the confidence level and locate 80%. Now if you'll go down the line for 80%, you'll go across the line for 13 degrees of freedom, you find that the relative T-score is 1.350. Now down at the bottom, I've left that the equivalent uh, for infinite number of sample size, that 1.282 is the equivalent 80% Z-score. And notice that the T-score is larger than the Z-score because of a small sample size. You're expanding the interval to make up for problems as S approximates sigma. All small samples require confidence level and the degrees of freedom. The degree of freedom is calculated uh, as follows. Degree of freedom is equal to... Uh, uh, n minus 1, and the intervals for small samples are exactly like those intervals for large samples, except that you utilize a t-score in the place of a z-score. t-scores might be listed as t, confidence level, comma, degree of freedom, because in order to find a t-score, you have to have the confidence level and the degrees of freedom.